Welcome back friends. Welcome back in another video tutorial from Microbiology with Shagnik. So today we are going to discuss about a recombinant DNA technology application that is site directed mutagenesis. Okay. So let's start our discussion. So first of all, let's focus on the name. So this is the site directed mutagenesis, right? So as the name suggests, it is a kind of mutation right and as the site directed is also incorporated in their name that means here we are incorporating mutation in a site okay that means this mutation is a kind of point mutation because it is occurring in one side of the dna molecule okay so what we can say by just looking the name of site directed mutagenesis that it is a recombinant DNA technology process where we are performing a point mutation right or a site di uh, directed mutation or a mutation in a specific site okay so usually this process is used to modify a protein artificially at one amino acid So here suppose we are replacing one amino acid such as glycine for example with alanine that is our goal. So how can we accomplish this that goal? So we will perform this by site directed mutagenesis. So here we are taking the example that in, in a protein in the place of aspartate we are willing to replace glutamate or oh, sorry here we are using glutamate containing protein and in the place of glutamate we will incorporate aspartate right that means aspartate will be replaced by glutamate sorry here we will replace the glutamate in with the help of aspartate although we can do the vice versa too that means that i am repeatedly saying that glutamate is replaced uh, aspartate is replaced by glutamate we can also perform this that means one amino acid will be replaced by another with the help of site directed mutagenesis okay and it is a point mutation right so first of all we need to know what are the tools that we need to perform site directed mutagenesis okay so first of all we need a dna molecule that will contain our gene of interest okay it can be a plasmid it can be anything okay but that must incorporate the gene that will encode our protein of interest where we are willing to incorporate a change okay then we need to know the nucleotide sequences around the site okay so that we can modify or use so that we can make a primer okay so two things is required a dna molecule that will act as a dna template which will contain the gene of interest okay not only that we we will also require a nucleotide sequences which will be around the site to be altered okay so that we can form the primer so what is the main important is what is the technique let me so the first step will be we will separate the two strand of the dna that contain our gene of interest that have the ability to encode the protein okay so this is our gene this total gene have the capability to produce the protein containing here we are uh, our initial protein is glutamate so glutamate so in that gene these three sequence is responsible for more specifically this one g a a is the uh, triplet codon that will give us what that will give us glutamate right and the entire gene will give us a entire protein right so our first job will be to separate the two strand of dna okay so we have separated now 
let's move to our next goal so our next goal will be we will generate a primer that will be exactly in complementary to that sequence not only that there will be a little change that will ensure that the protein after site directed mutagenesis will have aspartate in 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 place of glutamate okay that means we will do something like that let's see this okay so we have generated here a primer this primer is exactly incorporated to what is present in the 3 prime to 5 prime direction but there is a little change that we have g as the complementary to c right we have t sorry we have a as the complementary to t we have c right but there is no complementary g present right so here we are artificially incorporating c okay that is not although complementary to the template but we are incorporating so that after the completion of site directed mutagenesis they will give us aspartate instead of glutamate okay so now i think your question will be if you have incorporated a wrong base okay that is not complementary to the template base then how can we anneal the primer right so remember one thing if you have incorporated all the necessary temperature and environment that a prime perfect and normal primer annealing require then except that two all will form a hydrogen bond among themselves just like that okay again here also so hydrogen bond will be generated only these two mismatch base will not form or produce any kind of hydrogen bond okay but as all the remaining bases incorp produces hydrogen bond among themselves so they anneal very well okay so after the completion of annealing step we will also incorporate polymerase okay so polymerase will take the primer okay and with the help of the three prime oh group of that primer that means this one it will start synthesizing new dna by using this one as a complementary okay so that is how new dna strand will be synthesized with the help of that dna polymerase that means after separation of our dna containing gene of interest our first goal will be to to generate a primer that will be exactly complementary to our site to be altered but this primer will be modified in such a way that after completion of site directed mutagenesis we will have aspartate in presence of glutamate in our protein that is our main job right so we have generated a newly synthesized strand on the basis of the template that the source dna contains right our next target will be to separate this double stranded dna molecule again and we will use this blue mark template as a blue mark newly synthesized strand as a template now now another round of replication will ultimately give us a newly synthesized double stranded dna molecule that have the capability to give us the protein which will contain aspartate in place of glutamate okay so here remember one thing we will incorporate our primer specifically to the three prime end okay here we are not incorporating our primer in the middle okay so but again our dna polymerase will use the primer and the template primer will be used by dna polymerase for the three prime oh group and start elongating the newly synthesized dna strand 
so in that way we will have to newly synthesize dna strand containing the gene that now have the ability to encode the protein which will have a mutation at only one base okay so here the base is what aspartate in place of glutamate so let's revise this so site directed mutagenesis also known as oligonucleotide mutage oligonucleotide directed mutagenesis so now the question is why we are saying this as oligonucleotide directed mutagenesis oligonucleotide means what nucleotide a composition that consists of 9 to 10 nucleotide right so can we say that the primer that we use is a nucleotide oligonucleotide so this primer directs the mutagenesis that is why the name oligonucleotide directed mutagenesis okay so it is a recombinant dna technology application that we can use to generate a protein that are having a mutation in one amino acid okay so that is our job so what are our requirement our first requirement will be we should have a dna molecule that will contain the gene that will encode the protein there where we are wanting to incorporate the mutation right so our second goal will be we should know the nucleotide around the site where we are willing to incorporate the alter right we the other the in the site where we are willing to mutation nucleotide data present around we should know so that we can make the primer right so our first goal is to make a primer this primer will be exactly complementary to the site to be altered but the primer will be designed in such a way that it will incorporate aspartate in place of glutamate when uh, the protein will be produced after site directed mutagenesis process so here another thing that you need to remember this is the normal case i am not bored out about that that here here we are incorporating a mismatch mismatch base right so this mismatch bases will not form hydrogen bond among themselves as we know cytosine does not form any hydrogen bond with thymine right so they will not form any kind of hydrogen bond but if we provide appropriate temperature condition appropriate environment then all the bases that are present in primer and the nucleotide will form a hydrogen bond among themselves okay except these two so that is how a annealing will done so after the annealing process dna polymerase will start working and produce a newly synthesized dna okay that will contain the template dna along with the newly synthesized dna so our next goal will be to separate the template dna and newly synthesized dna and we will use the newly synthesized dna and we will generate a primer again that will be specifically to the 3 prime end of the template okay and dna polymerase will use that primer along with the template to generate again a new synthesized strand so as a result we will have two new new synthesized strand that means we will have now a new double stranded dna molecule that have the ability to incorporate aspartate in the place of glutamate during protein synthesis in the process called translation okay so that is how site directed mutagenesis can be used to generate a modification in one amino acid in a protein okay so the most important step here is the generation of the primer okay so for generation of the primer we need to know the what nucleotides are present around the site to be altered okay okay so i hope this video will be helpful to you and if it is please hit the like button share with your friends and subscribe to my channel to get more videos like that so thank you for listening to this class